Hello and welcome back. We are in our third version of a mini map in Construct 3. In the previous versions, we got everything set up for us to use in the first two versions of the mini map. And in this third version, some things are going to change because we have to approach this style a little differently than we did the other two maps. This map is going to have a framed window in the corner of the screen like we did in the first version, but instead of showing the entire level in one map, we're going to show a zoomed in area of where our player is on the map. And it will show a little bit more than what we can see on screen, but quite a bit less than the entire level. This style of map can be found in a number of different games, especially first person shooter games and battle royale type of games. So as I said, we're going to have to approach this one a little differently. In this particular version, we're going to get rid of these loops because we won't need them and we are going to use basically a pre-rendered map. We are going to recreate our level no matter how you set it up. As for the project that I have been using to show, what I did, I'm going to turn my map layer and map fade off so I can just see my level layer. And actually I'll turn the background off too so we can see this. What I did was when we made this, I used the grid for this layout specifically. I used a 32 by 32 grid and I snapped all of our building icons and the shop icons to that grid. Therefore, everything is at a 32 by 32 distance. So that is what I did to create my PNG format map. Or you can make yours a JPEG map. So I'll show you what I did here. I use a sprite for most of my artwork outside of Construct 3. I'm not much of an artist, but whatever program you can use, there are many options, both paid and free, available. I created a 32 by 32 grid inside of a sprite. I made the project in a sprite the same size as our project in or our layout in Construct 3, which is the 2560 by 2560. Then I used that 32 by 32 grid to place the buildings where they are in the Construct 3 layout onto the corresponding location inside my Aceprite project. And once I finished that, I just exported it as the same size, 2560 by 2560. That way it'll be the same size as our project in Construct 3 and we'll be able to scale it from that size. Okay, once you have that created, save it somewhere where you know where it is and can access it. And then on our map layer, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on, make sure it's unlocked and the map layer is selected. I'm going to double click and create a new sprite and just insert wherever. And then I am going to, I actually have mine off screen. I'm going to drag that PNG file into the project zoom out. This is the map I created in a sprite. And as long as it is the 2560 by 2560 that we created in our uh, layout, then we can set the origin to the very center and then exit out of it. And there we go. We have a, a big giant map that is the same size as our layout. Now I'm going to set this off to the side. It doesn't have to be in a specific location. We're going to set that in code. And while I have it selected, I am going to rename it. I'm actually just gonna call this one map. So here's a just a bonus tip for uh, Construct 3, the user interface. I'm trying to move the screen around with the middle mouse button and I can't. And the reason is, I don't know if you can see these little black lines up here and over here and they are also down here in the corners. Those are the margins. And if I click on the layout, over here in the editor, we have margins, and it's set to a thousand pixels. That means it can go a thousand pixels beyond the layout. But I, I feel a little restricted here, so I'm going to increase my margins, uh, at least the width, to, I'm gonna go 3000. And now I can kind of get that map into play. I'm going to go, actually, let's go 5,000. Okay, I can move around a little bit better now. Okay, I'm going to save real quick. Okay, if we turn on all of our layers, uh, I'm going to turn the background back on as well. 
our map fade layer has this map fade object. Well, we're not gonna have a pause screen in this particular project, and I'd like to clean things up before we get too involved in this version. So I'm going to delete this object, and we're gonna get a warning that we have conditions on our event sheet. That's fine, we're gonna delete those too, so let's go ahead and delete that. And now, with this map fade layer highlighted, I'm going to hit delete, and because there was nothing on it, it just deleted it without a warning. So for now, we should just have these three layers, background, level, and map. Now we can head back over to our event sheet, and let's scroll down this whole map group that we created earlier for the last project. We don't need anything in it, so I'm going to highlight the whole group and delete it. And then up here in our on start of layout event, I'm going to highlight the very bottom action and then hold shift and click this other action up here and highlight everything except for the camera position action, and I'm gonna delete it. So the only thing we should have in start of layout is set position of the camera to the player. Okay, one of the things we deleted in our map group was something that we want in this every tick. We have every tick set the position to lerp the camera to the player. We deleted the every tick set the angle of the player icon. And that's because we didn't want to update that every tick in the last version of the map. For this version of the map, we do want the angle updated every frame of the game. So let's go ahead and add an action. Go to our icon player and set angle to the player dot angle. And as I explained in the beginning of this video, we're not going to need these for each loops either because we're not going to be creating the map in code. Let's highlight this for loop, delete it, and highlight this for loop, delete it as well. So we've downsized quite a bit in our code. This is all we should have because that is how much we're going to have to change for this style of map. We are taking a completely different approach than the other two versions. Okay, let's come over here into our layers panel again. And if we click on the map layer, we should be able to rename it over here in the properties. I'm just gonna call this map space base. That's gonna be our base part of the map. And then in our layers panel, again, let's right click and add a layer to the top. And this one I'm gonna call map icons. And we're actually going to put more than just icons on there, but I think this gives us enough information. Okay, let's go over to the layout. And actually, if we just click on the icon player in the project panel, it'll bring it up in the properties. Let's move the layer from map base to map icons. And I know we just recently saved, but we've done quite a few changes. So I'm going to hit save again. Here on our level layer, I am going to zoom in to our viewport area. Actually, uh, if I click on the layout, bring up the properties, I'm going to turn the grid off. And we can turn the background off for a second so we can see this line. This is our viewport. This is the size of our viewport. And here's our map from the previous project in the top corner because this viewport is set at zero for the parallax, so none of this moves. And I'm going to get that map border and move it off to the side. And actually we don't even need the map border. So I'm going to, with the map border selected in the project, I'm actually just gonna delete it. And yes, I am sure. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here. And with our map object here, our mini map object, I'm going to try to decide how big we want this map to be. And I want it to be bigger than the 128 by 128 that we have it in because we're gonna take some of that area away. And I'll show you why. I'm going to double click to go into it. And if I get the circle tool with like a white color and I come up to the top and draw a circle filling this box and I'll fill it. Now I have this circle. If I play this, uh, ignore the black part or the gray part, this circle I want it to be a little bit bigger to show off our map because I think we have room, right? We have enough playroom that we could actually make this just a little bit bigger. So if I just kind of drag this out to get an idea, there's, well, let's, uh, let's go back down to 192 by 192. See, I think that's good. I think that's a good size. So instead of 192, I'm going to make it an even 200 by 200. Uh, since we're going 200, I'm gonna to try to make this uh, make more sense mathematically. Instead of 32 and 32, uh, how about 25 by 25? 
for the position. That'll put us a little closer to the edge, but it'll also help with our ratios when we're dealing with the 200 by 200 map size. Uh, math is going to be important in this version, and I want to try to simplify it as much as possible. So I'm trying to pick nice round numbers. With this mini map object selected, I am going to delete it. And actually over here in the project panel, I'm going to highlight it in the project panel and delete it completely from the project. All right, let's go to our map base layer. Make sure that's highlighted and unlocked and visible. And let's double click on the layout. And if we scroll down towards the bottom, we have a section called other. And in that we have drawing canvas. We want the drawing canvas. So let's insert that. And then we can click to insert it into the layer. And it makes this small little square here. So if I zoom in just a little, I want to put this in the top left corner, or you can just type in zero comma zero into the position. And then we can drag it to cover the size of the viewport. And you see it kind of goes over. What we can really do is come in here to the size. And we know that our viewport is 1280 by 720. So I can just type in the value manually, make sure that we have 1280 by 720 for the size of our drawing canvas. Okay, with this selected, let's rename this. I'm gonna call this canvas underscore map mask. So what a canvas does is allows you to draw to the actual canvas in code. It actually has other functionality to it, but what we're going to be using it for is to draw shapes to the screen. So before, when we were deciding how big we wanted the circle to be for our map, I wanna draw that circle on this canvas. So let's go over to the event sheet and in the on start of layout, the very first thing that I want to happen when this game loads, other than setting the position of the camera, I want to draw out our map. So let's add an action and let's go into canvas map mask. And I want to come down to drawing general and fill ellipse. So this is asking for the X coordinate of the center. So if we want it to be 200 pixels wide, then I want to come in at least 100 pixels to reach the center of the circle. But I also want it to be 25 pixels from the edge, so we would add 25 pixels. So the X is going to be 125, and the Y is going to be the same, 125 from the top, 125 from the left. And the radius is going to be half of our circle, which is 100, and the Y is gonna be the same thing. So for the color, we have a few different options that we can use, but by default, they put the RGBA expression in, and that is something we can use because we're only dealing with either black or white. All values at zero is solid black, and all values at 100 would be a solid white. I want a solid black, so we're going to go with zero, 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 and 100 for the alpha, hit done. And if we push play, we have a black circle in the corner of the screen that is 25 pixels from the left edge and 25 pixels from the top edge. Okay, so now we can go over here. I'm going to lock our map base and we put our player icon on the map icons layer. So I'm actually just going to move this guy off to the side. I don't want him to get in the way while I'm trying to work on the layout and we'll just set his position in the code. So back on the event sheet, on the start of layout, after we've created the canvas, let's add an action and go to our icon player and we want to set the position and we can use the location of that canvas. So let's type in the canvas map mask object dot X and I want it to be in the center of that circle that we created, which we know is uh, 200 by 200. So in the middle would be 100 pixels in plus the 25 from the edge. So canvas map mask dot X would be at zero. And then we want to add that 125 and then do the same thing for the Y. Canvas map mask dot Y plus 125. So now if we play and we can't see it, that's because it is in a different location in reference to our player, not the map. Okay, let's exit out of that. And if we click on our map icons layer, bring it up in the layer properties. One of the things I did not change is the parallax. It is still sitting at 100. Let's highlight that and type in zero comma zero. 
And now if we play, there is our player icon. He uh, faces whatever direction our player is facing on the map. Okay. Got that working good. All right, let's go ahead and save if you haven't already. And now I'm going to zoom out so we can see our other PNG map that we imported. And I wanna figure out how big I need this map to be. So here is how this is gonna work. Our PNG map is on our map base layer as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, for me to try to figure this out, I'm going to uh, make a new sprite and I'm going to make it uh, 200 by 200 and I'm going to turn on my grid, snap to edges, and then get my circle. And I'm just going to make myself a 200 by 200 circle and then fill it and put the origin in the middle. And then I'm going to move it to my icons layer and I'm going to put it 125 by 125. So that's where our map is going to be on our screen. I'm just doing this for visual representation. That is on my map icons layer. I'm going to lock that so I don't move it. And then I'm going to grab our PNG map and kind of move it over here. So now we can kind of see what's going to be seen inside this circle. Obviously this is way too big. So I am going to start sizing it down just to get a basic idea of how big I want this to be. As our player moves around, the map is going to move in the opposite direction to show where our player is in the level. I'm going to make it even a little smaller. I think something like that. So if our player is in the far corner, uh, the map will be like that. And if it goes to the other far corner, the map will be like that. So I think that gives us enough room to move the map around and uh, show us enough of the level inside the circular map. So that is 352 by 352. I'm actually going to make that an even 350. I'm going to actually undo everything that I've done with this map. So uh, it is back at its regular 2560 by 2560 size off to the side. And then I'm going to go back into the map icons layer, unlock it. And this sprite that I created to get an idea of what I wanted, I'm just going to uh, actually come over here to the project panel and delete it from the project completely. Okay. Uh, before we go any further, I want to make sure that we are only seeing uh, what is inside this circle but I want to see the map inside this circle and nowhere else. So if I were to place this map like that and played it, uh, the map is seen everywhere. But if I come over here to map base and I untick this transparent box in the layer properties panel, it now is a solid gray color because the background color is this gray color. We can click the color, go in, I'm going to go solid black and it makes it solid black. Now that doesn't change anything for us just yet, but it will. If we come over to the project panel and click on the canvas map mask object, brings it up in the properties. We can scroll down to effects and where it says blend mode, let's set that to destination in. Now one of the things we'll have to do is make sure that our map base layer if we click on it to bring it up in the properties, we want to make sure that it is set to force own texture. So down here in the appearance, force own texture, make sure that box is ticked. That way it's going to mask out everything that is outside of that circle. If we play, there is our map and not a great representation. I'll just move it down a little and play it again. There's our map. So we really are going to have to uh, have it scaled down quite a bit, which is why we said, what, 350? So if I do it like that, play it, now you get more of the map. Okay, I'm going to undo the sizing of the map. And another thing we're going to have to do is figure out the percentage, like we did in the other map versions, what the percentage of the map is at 350 by 350 to the rest of the layout, which is 2560 by 2560. 
I'm going to use percentagecal.com and I'm going to ask it what 350 is what percentage of 2560. And that's going to give us 13.67. Okay, we're going to have to remember 13.67. Or instead of having to remember it, we can actually create a variable and store that percentage in it. So let's go ahead and do that. On the map object, let's click on that object bring up its properties and let's go to instance variables and let's add a new instance variable. And I'm gonna call this uh, map scale and I'm going to put that percentage in there. And that was 13.67. So I'll put that in 0 0.1367. So anytime I multiply a value by the 13.67%, we can just plug in this instance variable at 0 0.1367. Okay, and there it is. We can reference that whenever we need to now. And now if we go over to the event sheet, as soon as our game starts on start of layout, we can scale that map to that percentage. So let's add an action, get our map, and we can just set the scale and it will scale it on both the X and Y axis for us. So type in set scale and all we have to enter is the map object dot map scale variable. So now it will take the size of the map object, which is 2560 by 2560, and it'll multiply it by 0 0.1367. And it'll give us a map size of 350 by 350. And then we'll also need to position it to our circle area in this top left corner of the viewport. So let's go ahead, add an action, get our map object, and we want to set the position. And for the X, it's going to be the canvas map mask object dot X. And then we can add that 125 value just like we did with icon player object. So that will put the center of the map to the center of the circle to start off with. And do the same thing for the Y, that canvas map mask object dot Y plus 125. And then we can play that. And there it is, it's scaled down quite a bit, obviously, and it's uh, sitting in the center. So we're right in the center. Now, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't move or it just shows our icon facing the same direction as our player is moving. Okay, we've done a lot. I'm going to go ahead and save. We will wrap this project up in the next video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up while you're at it. Check out all the links in the description below and I will see you in the next video.